This is FTLAK and I'm gonna show you my mods. Got all my basic world settings set up and I'm gonna go through and talk about a handful of the mods that I use on a regular basis and why I use them. So on my client side, we'll start here. So Action Key Reborn. Uh, if you're a streamer, this is an absolute must. This mod will actually help you with many things and lots of multitasking. Let's uh, show you. So this mod is great because you can go up to a tree, you can hold down shift, hit it once, it's gonna chop it for you. If you actually double click, it'll select that type of item. You can also hold shift and drag over what you would like to chop down. Also works for any multitasking item, digging, mining, shoveling, and so forth. This gives you times to focus on chat, gives you a chance to get up and use the bathroom. That's why I said I highly recommend this for streamers. The next couple of client mods, I'm gonna kind of go through and just show you all together. So admin scoreboard, by hitting tab, it actually gives you some more added things that you can go right to a player. Like you can stop a wildfire from happening. Definitely very nice. You've got some awesome configuration features in here, God mode, so on and so forth. Advanced controls, I came from playing on console. So this kind of gives me some extra added things, force attack toggle, some other neutral shadow creatures, definitely a great mod. And then combined status, you'll see in the top right hand corner, it's going to display the health, hunger, sanity, temperature, seasons, and moon phase. So let's show you those. All right, so for my advanced controls, I can just hit F to attack things. I don't have to add that extra little piece in where you're holding control and F for things like butterflies. My combined stats are up here in the corner if you look over the water. So you can see my max hunger, max sanity, and max health. These are all our combined stats. Shows you how many days until the next season. All really quite nice. Admin scoreboard. Has this ever happened to you? Come across something? Friends burning down the forest? Well, what's cool is you can hit tab, you can go over, you can go right to another player. You can have that player drop their items. You can kill that player for being silly. You can extinguish nearby fires. Now, it's kind of a bummer. I'd already killed these craft houses though that I spent all those resources on. People really hate berms. What's the deal with that? But you can actually repair nearby burnt buildings. Stand by it. Are you sure you want to repair? Yes. And they're back. No harm, no foul. This is a great mod to have on when you're playing with people and they might die or you might need to kill them. Also, you can toggle on God mode, creative mode. You can also respawn or reroll a person and you can make yourself toggle visibility if you want to be a creeper. I'm going to go over the next couple just because they're all really quick. They shouldn't take too much explanation, but might help you out. So geometric placement. This makes it so you can snap objects into a grip, build around. This makes it so everything's nice, neat, and organized. Your option button is B. Your toggle button is V. You can set up some of your grid stuff here. You can also select your colors here. You can also do it in game. We've got gesture wheel. So if you have purchased any of the cool little emotes, you can actually move them down or around, but that's gesture wheel. That's just by hitting G, which is really easy. Idea testing. Thank you, Travis. This is one that I didn't even know about until I watched his YouTube video. Idea testing makes it so you can disable the insanity filter, lightning rod ranges. You can see with a solid line. You can also get rid of sounds. So if you have somebody that's constantly caroling in your game, looking at you, Kesa, you can turn that off or on. I actually keep it on. I love the caroling. So, but you can turn off things like glomer buzzing, all of those little sounds that drive you bonkers. You HUD mini map, kind of self-explanatory. I absolutely love using this for when I'm trying to map out the rest of the world. Nightmare phase indicator. So this is actually going to tell you what nightmare phase it's in when you're downstairs. So let's take a look. All right. For geometric placement, if you hit B while in game, you can actually decide the colors that you're gonna see. I had it turned off because I was using a controller. I'm gonna turn it back on. I've been told by many people to set these at multiple different settings. This one seems to be the one that I like the most, but please experiment. So I have it set for fine 10, wall six, turf two. Uh, my refresh speed, I have 10%. Uh, snapping a grid while tilling a farm, you can turn on or off. Uh, weather to adjust grid spacing based on what you're trying to place, you can turn on or off. Number of resources with your cursor, you can turn all these on and off. You can change what color they are. So currently I'm set to red blue you can have black white outlined or you can even customize so I'm gonna actually go red green you can change the default camera angle for your geometric placement go your axes I'm gonna take some pine cone see I get this cool little grid so I'm actually gonna hold shift and I'm gonna draw a line and I'll let go and now I'm just going through and placing based off of that setting that I had just all those that I had set up 
Every now and then you're gonna have weird spacing, like one could have gone right here. Sometimes you'll have a bird or something in the way as well, but that's geometric placement. So gesture wheel, you actually hold down G. Just like on console, if you're holding in one of your R3 or L3 buttons, you can go click the button and you can go through and do the gestures. You might see less gestures than I have. I've actually got all of them. I really enjoy them. Uh, it's a fun way to kind of mess around with your friends, but then also to add some animation. All right, idea tester. So this is kind of a hard one for me to show. I don't have a big pile of poop near me, but I have the sound effect for poop turned off. So you wouldn't hear it if it was standing right next to me. And then HUD minimap. So you'll see right here, I can close it, but I can open it. I can scroll down, I can scroll in as far as I want, I can scroll out. This is about the range that I like, but as you see, as I am running, I can see, oh, cool. There's, you know, the portal. I can, it makes it easier for you to map if you're somebody who is meticulous and really wants to get that entire piece of the map and everything kind of spaced out. It'll also help you, you know, finding things later on. And then the nightmare phase. So when you're in the caves, you're gonna see right up here in the top middle what nightmare phase I'm in. And that's gonna be really helpful just so that you're not in the wrong area at the wrong time. Status announcements. So when you see people that are constantly saying things like, I have two twigs, I we need more drying racks. You hold Alt Shift, click on it to announce the items. There's a lot of settings in here. This one's currently turned off. It's not something that I've played with a whole lot. Too many items. This is a great one for me when I'm making YouTube videos. It makes it so I can quickly access everything that I need in the game. Uh, just by hitting T, you can set up what your clicks are. So my left click would be one, my right click would be 10. Save data. So I actually have a lot of my favorites saved. Search history number, font size, and change quite a bit. Fly, and we'll turn on craft pot. This is another one that's gonna show you recipes. And then placement of statues. Actually never use this. I don't seem to be the person that has the patience to place statues but I've heard that this actually will help you create a perfect circle and other things. So let's go in and let's show you. All right, so we're in our world. Now too many items. Once you just hit T, it's actually gonna pop up this humongous menu, which has a whole lot. And I might actually make a separate video for this, but some of the basic stuff that I'm just gonna show you very quickly. Down here at the bottom, you can actually turn on creative mode. You can turn on God mode. You can turn on one hit kill. You can make yourself invisible. You can also fully fix your sanity, health. You can reset your health to never go below one and you can fix your hunger. Now I've made some custom items. These are all things that I like to use if I'm building a YouTube video really quickly. So I can right click and just get those 10 items that I need to kind of get some stuff going really quick. I'm actually gonna keep creative mode on and creative mode makes it so you can see everything and build everything. So if you hit survivor items, I actually can build things that aren't exclusive to wart. This is anything that any survivor can build. So if I wanted to make some bramble husks, I can. If I also wanted to make my favorite helms because wart is deep down inside a warrior. There we go. So perfect. Now as for the cooking, this is a great one, especially if you're new and not used to cooking and don't starve. You actually just put an item in and it'll pop up and it actually gives you a little menu here. So I can see the limit is I just can't have meat. So uh, dragon fruit pies are one of my favorite things to make. Put a pumpkin. So if I wanted a pumpkin cookie, I need honey. Do some more pumpkin. So right there I have pumpkin cookies, but there is a possibility that I'm going to have taffy. So let's see if I can fix that. So just by putting the two pumpkins, it's going to guarantee me the pumpkin cookie. If I just do barnacles, and tell me what else. If I add certain things, what it'll make. And that's cooking. Now we just wait. All right, it's definitely a good mod, worth checking out. Gonna help you with cooking, which is always something nice because not everybody's as good as uh, everybody else at it. That actually concludes my ones that I have in my client mod. The only one I didn't go over was the cookbook client, which I currently have disabled. This just helps you know what you can cook. I've been trying to get better at cooking. So let's move over to server mods. All right, it's server mods. We have quite a few that I really like to use. Um, API Gemcore is one. 
Uh, thank you for some of the creators of Don't Starve who are actually in here uh, helping with this one. This one actually makes it so if you wanted to use a code for a seated world, you turn on Gemcore, and then you'd be able to put it in here. Uh, I'm not using a code right now, so I have that one turned off. Also, if you wanted to get the seed number for your world, you would have to have this one turned on. My friend Beta, Random Beta actually made this. This is Beta, is a tank guardian that uses ice to survive. He uses his cold voice and unique equipment to help him and his allies be safe. Beta is a fantastic character. Uh, there's no configurations. There's a lot of cool things with Beta. Uh, I will say Beta is a very difficult character for me. You have to constantly keep your body temperature very low, so it's hard for, to, for me <laughs> to survive at least. Bits for Tricks. Uh, you guys have seen me interact with this more recently. They sent me a video asking if I would like to join, and the video had all fun and games in it. So shout out to Travis and all fun and games. That was the main reason I decided to sign up for that one. It's a lot of fun. It's a great way for your community to interact with you and use bits to kind of interact with you in positive and negative ways. Console Pro. So this is actually another one that I use. I don't remember if it's Console Pro or if it's Advanced Controls. One of them is giving me that forced attack with the F, but I constantly am using this one. Epic Health Bar. This one's going to show you the Epic Health Bar above a boss. Finder Redux. Global Positionings is going to show you where all your buddies are. Finder is going to show you where the items are in chess. Health Info is going to give you their health above. So let me show you those. So you can see that awesome health bar up at the top here. I should probably put a helmet on. <laughs> and then when you actually click on or just hover your mouse over the giant, it's going to also tell you his health. But this is a great one so you can get used to kiting patterns, but then also remind yourself that you're only a little bit further so you don't start tanking way too early. First try. So you can see there, bird has 25 health, butterfly has one. Finder mod is great. When you're coming back to base, you're gonna drop things off. What the, f uh, okay. So somebody built a whole bunch of chests. Instead of asking like a crazy person, hey, where do you put this? The finder mod, it's really nice. You can just pick the item up and the chest is highlighted. So you can quickly and effectively put things away. And if you just want to see where things are, just click to see. Now if you're building, if you actually just hover over, it'll tell you what box those are in if you have those items. Does the same thing with food. All right, for these next couple, these are ones that I have on pretty much all the time. Infinite Tent and Siesta does exactly what that says. Instead of having 10 uses, it's infinite. No more respawn penalty, so you're no longer losing a quarter of your life. No more thermal stone durability. It's a rock. It's not gonna lose its durability. Didn't lose it and don't starve. Shouldn't lose it and don't starve together. Reign of Runts. It's actually a really fun mod if you want to be any of the little runts. You'll actually see quite often for me that I have a moose goose running around. Uh, he also said if I put his name in the video that it would be a great video. So let's see if that worked. Now with the Brain of Runts, it actually adds in characters like Deer Clops, Farger, Moose Goose, and Dragonfly. Each character has some fun little things on the side here that you can read. They've got some different styles. You're not the actual size of these guys. It's kind of fun to play around and just be somebody a little different. So right now, I'm a Deer Clops. Set piece config. Sometimes I'll turn this on. This is one that's actually nice. If you absolutely need to have your read trap, you can set it. If you want one of the other fine-tuned adjustments that you can do, you can have the developer's graveyard, tallbird fortress, hound fortress, pig guards, living fortress, and so on. You can also have rare or old don't starve set pieces like the insane pig, the Mechtus city, Mechtus village. These were very rare set pieces in don't starve. But if you want to put them into your game, you can. Tropical experience, return of them. So this will actually give you the cape to go and play Hamlet or Shipwrecked, but with friends. So kind of cool mod if you really enjoy Hamlet like myself or Shipwrecked. Those are both single player games. This makes it so you can play with your friends and you have the capabilities to turn things off like caves, turn things on or off that you don't want or you do want. Wormhole markers. You'll see this constantly in my world. Every time you jump through a wormhole, it will then select a color so that when you jump through the other side, it will actually show you that same wormhole. Wormhole one. 
You can now see that it's marked blue on the map, so I can see that this wormhole led to this wormhole. Red to red. You should really have that, Clay. Don't worry, I'll let you take that one if you need it. Pink to pink. In this world, I only had three wormholes, and you can see we've got our pink to our pink, our red to our red, and our blue to our blue. In a world that you have four, it's going to give you another color, and if you actually add in wormholes using console commands, it will just continue to give you colors. Wormhole telelocator, telelocation, does exactly what it says it does. You can actually make a telelocation daft and prism, and you can actually move your wormholes. Airplane, it's actually a really fun mod. You can actually go through and create an airplane and fly it around. I am terrible at this, but if you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. Display food values. Does exactly what it says. Shows your health, hunger, and sanity values for each food. The Invader Zim mod lets you be Zim uh, from the TV show. It's a lot of fun. Food values and item tooltips. This is another one uh, does some stuff similar. I'm not really using either of these anymore. Forest biomes, very similar to set piece config. That one will just let you kind of configure your world a little bit different. Increase stack size. You can change the value of your stack sizes. So typically you can only hold 20 grass, 20 twigs. This will make it so you can hold up to 99. It will let you go farther. I don't recommend going past 99. It will have your game crash a little bit more. Island adventure lets you embark on a tropical journey of the seas, lets you play a shipwrecked. This is is very similar to Tropical Experience. Let's Play Together uh, isn't currently working. I hope that it comes back, but it has kind of been replaced by Bits for Tricks. Lightsabers does exactly what it says it does. Gives you lightsabers. So I found it's this mod to find everything. Best to just type SAB or Saber. So I'm gonna actually get one of each. And all of them do have somewhat of a special ability. So I actually think the green saber can actually chop trees. Kind of nice. We've got the white saber, purple saber, dark saber, red saber, ring saber, blue saber, sword saber, and yellow saber. Totally necessary. All right, last couple I'm just gonna kind of go through here. So not enough turps. Adds over 60 brand new turps to craft and use in your world. Really nice. You like to make everything look shiny and fancy. You got pig mask compatible with Don't Starve Together. This is something that they need to bring in for wart one way or another. I'm gonna continue to ask for this. Uh, it is a fantastic mask. Reforged, if you wanna go back and play Reforged on your system, this is a way for you to do that. Rot you gone. Thank you, Carrie Cat, for this recommendation. This one will actually allow you to have certain things after holiday events automatically clean up manure, rotten eggs, Halloween candies, winter ornaments, things like that. So it doesn't lag down your server with extra items all over your world. The architect pack, uh, kind of like, you know, too many items and some of the other ones that I've showed you. Build everything, including items from Shipwrecked, Hamlet, and the Forge and Gorge. And then Sweet Home uh, is a fantastic mod. And let me show you what this one does. All right. This last one's a lot of fun. You have to find everything under the everything tab, uh, but it makes it so you can actually build, craft different houses. And just like in Hamlet, these houses are actually functional and you can go in, you can store things. But best one of all, of course, has to be a little blue box, definitely bigger on the inside. But what's awesome about the TARDIS is you can actually go up and use the TARDIS and you can actually relocate yourself as well. Just like that. If you liked this video, uh, please make sure like, subscribe, all the fun things. If you want to see in more detail some of the other mods that I'm using or any of the mods that I showed today, uh, let me know in the comments.